Hello, so I am Luc Nadal, and um, I'll uh, start the introduction, uh, then hand uh, it over to Ivona to introduce the metrics of the, well, the principles and the objectives and the metrics of the TOD standard, including uh, new elements in version uh, 3.0. And, um, and then I'll um, introduce very briefly a, f a sampler of uh, including TOD projects uh, that uh, we have uh, looked at and, um, and, and, and have some scores for uh, at least some of them. So what is the agenda today? First, I will uh, briefly try to um, define TOD, what is not TOD, what is TOD. Um, the TOD standard version three puts some um, uh, heightened emphasis on inclusive. The TOD for us is always inclusive, is always equitable, uh, but uh, uh, there's extra steps that can be taken to make it um, um, uh, inclusive at the local level. So I will discuss that very briefly. Um, we'll introduce the TOD standard. Um, for those of you who have not um, come across it uh, so far. I will discuss very briefly what is new in version uh, 3.0. Uh, there's a, a couple of changes to um, um, mostly to metrics and um, a clarification of uh, two kinds of, uh, of mix, one being a uh, mix of use and the other being mix of, um, of people and activities. And then we'll go on to the, um, uh, to the case studies. So um, let's start from some vision of uh, e even. Uh, we um, have our vision for, for cities in, in the future. Uh, mixed, uh, dense, compact, walkable, and um, uh, very adapted and uh, welcoming and supportive of, um, uh, um, of uh, sustainable transport modes from cycling to um, uh, mass transit in particular. Um, but let's uh, start where we are mostly, maybe 95, 99% of the urban world today. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure on, this, um, on these figures, but um, uh, car saturated, car dependent. Um, essentially, uh, most of urban developments is in the, the 1950s, uh, at least in countries that have motorized uh, rapidly in that period and uh, increasingly all over the world. So um, cars are great, I use them, um, but uh, we overuse them vastly. And um, the, uh, an urban world created around the, the, the um, needs of cars create a dysfunctional world from the non-motorized. And uh, one example of that is um, uh, this example of uh, North American sprawl in Dallas, Texas. Uh, obviously, given the distances between uh, the pieces of development and the infrastructure that's available, uh, it, it cannot be, it's not workable. You can't walk from a, a place to place uh, to destinations. Uh, very difficult to cycle. And uh, mass transit is very difficult to introduce because of the low densities and uh, the low ridership. Um, there are other forms of sprawl. Sprawl is not always low density. Uh, by our definition, sprawl is um, car dependent um, and it's uh, dysfunctional for other modes. That's, that's how we define sprawl. And it can be high density, like in this case in the outskirts of uh, Beijing, China. Another example of uh, what I would call a high density sprawl uh, that is very adverse to non-motorized people, although they compose most of the, uh, the population still in this, uh, in the city like Yichang. Um, sprawl, as I said, is pedestrian dysfunctional. It is cyclist dysfunctional. It is public transport user dysfunctional. And uh, so we need uh, we need to bring transit, of course. Um, uh, there's, um, there's no salvation from the, the lower, um, you know, the worst um, uh, levels of uh, hell unless we bring some kind of efficient um, uh, transit uh, to, um, uh, to places. However, 
uh, transit is not enough. And uh, there are many examples of, of uh, what we call transit adjacent, uh, it's a fairly common phrase, uh, transit adjacent development. Uh, this example is in Cape Town in the flats, the, the township uh, area of, um, of Cape Town. And there's a heavy commuter rail there, uh, but it's infrequent. And the urban, urban development around is absolutely not designed to uh, prioritize or to facilitate its use. So everything is fenced, including the development. That, oh, sorry, how would you like to get back? <laughs> sorry about that. Um, so you see that even in this uh, kind of um, uh, lower income areas, uh, the former town, township, there are of course some uh, so social differences and stratification, um, there's a lot of uh, gated communities. Um, and uh, there's also big roads. Um, other example of um, what I would define as transit adjacent, not fully transit oriented development, although it's much better in many ways. Uh, and it's very famous, that's the Koichiba um, BRT corridors. Uh, some, some parts of Koichiba are wonderful. Uh, some parts of the, the corridors are not very pedestrian friendly, and this is an example of that. Uh, another example of that, um, transit adjacent, but not really transit oriented, even if the density, of course, is, uh, is there along the transit, which is the first step, the necessary first step to getting to TOD. But TOD is more than that. TOD is urban development that is design, that is uh, conceived from the out, uh, outstep for, um, for pedestrian, for cyclists, for transit users. Easy transit access. Transit, of course, in walking distance. Um, and that's the case of this um, um, wonderful example of Central St. Giles in uh, London. Um, a mixed-use development, extremely dense, very close to transit, not only the red buses, but also the, 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 the tube underground um, uh, railway. And um, uh, it's also um, uh, a project that, that mixes um, a lot of uh, office development, which would be the natural demand of the market, and that would have been the, the, the whole of the project if, without good planning and uh, the weighing of communities and um, enlightened government, local government, Camden, um, the borough of Camden. And um, uh, so uh, we'll come back to that. This is also uh, what I would rate as the higher level of TOD, which is uh, not only um, a walkable uh, mix, but also inclusive. Um, again, there's, um, uh, there's housing as well as office um, uh, floors in this in this project, and moreover, uh, half of the housing units are affordable, subsidized social housing uh, in a place where uh, land values and real estate is extremely high. It did take some planning and uh, some um, um, uh, government um, uh, interventions at various level to uh, get this um, uh, done. Um, I would like to discuss very briefly uh, what we mean by inclusive, um, inclusive TOD. And we see two dimensions. So I mentioned that we, th we believe that TOD is equitable in general. And uh, that's uh, the first dimension of TOD, that um, uh, as long as building, housing, uh, job, all the resources, all the opportunities of the cities, um, at least the great majority of them are located uh, within good quality walking and cycling distance from transit, transit that connects all those parts, that connects the peripheries to the core and to the various sub-centers and to, to the, the, the diverse services um, um, and, uh, and resources. That's a great step towards equity. So that means curtailing the outward expansion, expansion of um, uh, peripheries that are uh, car-oriented, car-dependent, and uh, not uh, accessible otherwise. Then there's a second step, um, a second level in um, inclusivity. And 
and uh, that's some um, uh, balanced mix of act not only activities but also people, ability, age, gender, income level, uh, and there are many other dim dimensions um, of uh, demographic that needs to be um, uh, to, to to be mixed, hopefully, and and this mix at at, at local level. So this requires specific policies and alignment of um, uh, stakeholders in, um, in, in pulling through. All right, so um, we define TOD based on eight principles, and there's a, almost a seven, so there, there are two mixed principles here, here uh, in this slide, mixed people, mixed users, because we have expanded that uh, mixed principle to, to really highlight uh, this. And um, now I will uh, hand it over to Ivona Alfred, who will now present this section. Okay. Thanks, Luke. Hi, everyone. So, by the way, you can tag along this part of the presentation by going to todstandard.org, and you can actually access the TOD standard uh, digital version um, if you still have time. Um, and I'll go over uh, specifically through the TOD standard framework and then give it back to um, Luke. So, as Luke mentioned, because of various reasons, it was necessary to define the principles that will stand for equitable um, and sustainable development. So those principles were actually crafted through years of testing and collaboration with our partners. And we have walk, cycle, uh, compact, shift, densify, mix, which is very important, connect. Um, yep, those are uh, eight of them. And uh, there are all actually very needed to create this um, equitable, walkable, livable environment that we all seek. Um, so later on, uh, after the principles were established, we really recognized a need for a standard. Um, and there are many standards out there. This, is, this standard is more of a tool to guide um, development, but also to help um, to help actually um, figure out whether development is actually good, if that development is pure um, TOD. So this is a, a quick matrix of our principles. You see them on top. Um, then there are the objectives that actually guide each principle and the embedded metrics that actually help measure and estimate the performance of the projects in station areas. Uh, so we are diving into the first principle walk. Um, walk is, of course, the basic uh, form of mobility for humankind. Um, it enables vulnerable um, uh, inhabitants to move between spaces easily. Um, actually, it is um, proven that people prefer walk to walk when they can. Um, they use their two feet, they commute to transit, and they do also the last mile of commute uh, by walk. However, walk is not always properly enabled. There are problems with um, completeness of the walkways. Uh, the walkways are not accessible to people with uh, physical issues. Um, so we have three objectives that help define this pedestrian realm that should be safe and complete, active and vibrant, and comfortable and temperate. So that all pertains to the quality of walk. Um, and a big, uh, well, important update in this TOD standard uh, version is that we really require the walkways to be accessible to users with physical difficulties. So they, they cannot be just passable, they have to be passable to uh, for example, we uh, people using wheelchairs. Uh, then the second principle cycle. So cycling similarly to walk is very efficient, um, healthy, relatively cheap. Um, however, cycling is also not properly enabled everywhere because there are no um, safe cycle, there's no safe cycle network in certain places or people don't have access to cycles even. Um, so there are two objectives that promote uh, safe cycle network and the storage, uh, which includes storage uh, in our uh, buildings and near transit stations where people can actually switch the mode of transportation. Um, moving on to the next, connect. So connectivity is really a, um, 
a combination of um, short walking and cycling routes that are prior prioritized over um, motor vehicle routes. So the idea is that um, uh, using or building too much uh, car infrastructure actually promotes exclusivity of people from space. But by creating more um, pedestrian or walkways or shared streets and safe um, cycleways, we're actually tipping off that balance towards the favor of um, pedestrians and cyclists. Uh, then transit. Transit, of course, and especially high capacity transit is needed um, to establish TOD. So it's, it's a required principle. Um, transit um, also promotes access to high capacity transport uh, mode, but also access to other parts of the city where people can access um, services and employment centers. Uh, so now the fifth principle mix. Uh, mix actually underwent um, a, a quite a vast transformation. We award um, the biggest chunk of points uh, for mix and that's where you will see um, how mix actually stands for inclusive TOD. Um, so the first objectives uh, really speaks to um, accessibility to services and opportunities. So um, we have three metrics that speak to that. Complementary uses, which actually promotes or measures the overall mix of the district um, or um, development. Uh, we have access to local services, which was also slightly altered, which uh, right now we require the project to be accessible to not only sources of fresh food, but also elementary schools and um, forms of healthcare facilities, so either pharmacies or hospitals or clinics. And a new metric, access to uh, parks and playgrounds. Um, it's quite obvious in some places, but some places actually are uh, open space deserts. Uh, so we really want to award points. It's actually one point for um, uh, open space within development or within a walking distance. Um, so now we have objective B for mix, and that's where um, the social inclusion is promoted through three metrics. We have um, affordable housing metric, um, housing preservation, and business and services preservation. And let me just go over the major changes that occurred in this version of the TOD standard. For affordable housing, uh, we now have uh, three variants. Um, because um, actually in each variant we, we would like to see a different desired threshold for the percentage of affordable housing. So in general case where the area is already well mixed, uh, there is already um, either median, median income community or um, the balance of income is established, we would want to see a similar project that that contributes to that balance. However, in high income communities, for example, for infill projects such as um, Central St. Giles, we would want to see that share of affordable housing much higher. And we actually reward projects that, uh, that provide more affordable housing units. Uh, for low income communities case, it's a little bit different. We actually want to discourage from building new uh, low-income housing in already existing low-income communities because that will just create more poverty in the area. So this, this option uh, strictly pertains to housing upgrades um, and therefore um, we, we award projects such as uh, slum, uh, slum rehabilitation um, on site. Uh, a quick note, uh, so goal to uh, achieve gold standard, um, at least two points need to be achieved in this um, uh, principle. So now we have um, the last two in objective B, housing preservation and business and services preservation. Those are brand new. Um, because of those, we really, we're really attempting to negate this idea of you know, new development, um, basically destroying communities when we really um, provide space for pre-existing households and um, space for pre-existing businesses, we really um, 
really allowed to keep this um, character of the area while still creating space for newcomers through affordable housing. So it's sort of creating a balance um, and inclusion. Uh, moving on to densify. So density is um, another underlying principle of TOD. Um, so now actually in this new uh, version of the TOD standard, we have two separate uh, density metrics, separate for residential density and non-residential density. And um, this is so because we want to promote not an overall density of, of bulk, of, of built um, physical environment, but we really want to promote density of people and, den and density of activity, which is um, speaking to that first metric. So the, let me just go to the next slide. So as I said, that two separate metrics. So the non-residential density, um, it doesn't measure um, the floor area um, of, of, of the non-residential density, but it actually measures um, a, a human activity. So visitors and um, number of jobs. And this is so to promote really vibrant districts. Um, um, yep, and uh, also points thresh, uh, the thresholds reward uh, higher density closer to the main transit station. Uh, we have compact. Uh, compact is combination of density or densify and um, transit. Um, so we have two metrics here. We have uh, urban site, which requires the project to be built on already pre-existing um, urban site. It's quite straightforward. We don't we, we wouldn't want to see projects on the fringe of the city. We want to see dense urbanized core um, and transit options. So those are basically points available for additional uh, transit options in the area, um, including um, cycle share. And finally, the last principle shift. Um, so shift is where actually it's quite metaphorical to me. Uh, <laughs> but it's basically shifting uh, from the area that um, favors um, that favors use of infrastructure for cars into shifting towards infrastructure uh, for pedestrians and, um, and uh, cycleways. So we have three metrics within this uh, principle. So that completes our uh, quick overview of the framework and I'm going to uh, hand it back to Luke. Thank you. Thanks, Ivona. Um, so I, I hope this overview was useful. You have access to the um, online version of the TOD standard. Feel free to send any questions about um, um, about the principles, the performance objectives and the metrics that, that we, we used. Um, uh, either now or, or later on, I will be happy to uh, follow up and answer. So I would like to present uh, very briefly a few projects that are done very well according to our um, uh, assessments. And uh, the first of them, I've al already introduced it. It's uh, this uh, Central St. John's um, project in the heart of uh, London. Um, it's a very high-end um, uh, project, very, very expensive land, very, uh, very valuable real estate. Companies like Google and um, others, uh, high-tech and, and major um, uh, world companies uh, ha have uh, offices in, um, in the, the part that is to the left of your screen, which is um, all office. Um, very interesting design that... Um, uh, create a very large floor plate, which is uh, actually needed um, uh, these days by um, uh, the uh, top companies, but uh, in a U-shaped building that um, exposes the, the, the sides of the lot and um, uh, uh, faces the streets and, and create a very urban um, uh, building. The reddish building to your right hand on the screen is, uh, is the housing uh, part. And as I already mentioned, it's split in two between market rate and cross-subsidized social housing uh, that costs um, nothing to the government or to uh, 
uh, at, at any level is cross subsidized internally uh, through the market rate uh, office real estate and the market rate uh, housing real estate. Um, let me carry on. And um, uh, we have another um, excellent um, um, uh, project uh, in Paris this time. Um, it's the Rive Gauche, uh, Paris Rive Gauche redevelopment, and the, and the section of it is called Masséna. And um, um, it was designed, uh, each section of this Paris Rive Gauche, very large redevelopment project along the, the banks of the Seine and on uh, former rail yards and uh, warehouse district. Um, uh, I've been um, uh, master designed by um, uh, uh, architect and, and planner. So the one we're going to focus on is uh, uh, was um, master plan and designed by uh, Christian de Porzampar. And it's a very interesting uh, approach. Um, and I hope to have a seminar that uh, goes further into details about this. But uh, it's, it's, it's an approach that tries to mix uh, the traditions of um, um, uh, tradi the, the so-called traditional urban urbanism with uh, buildings on the perimeter of blocks um, and uh, street corridors with the tradition of modern urbanism with three freestanding buildings in, um, in hopefully open garden, you know, uh, park space. Very often in the middle of parking, unfortunately, uh, has been the, the end result. But so this is a, a, an attempt to uh, bring together the qualities of um, both traditional and modern urbanism. So stay tuned, we'll, uh, we'll discuss that uh, further uh, later on. This project, by the way, has a 50% social housing, uh, has reduced parking. I, mentioned, I forgot to mention about the Central Saint Jai that there's, an, uh, there's no parking except a, a few spots for uh, essential uh, parking. Uh, uh, that, that would include emergency loading, uh, unloading, and um, uh, disable access, uh, contractors, and so on and so forth. So uh, back to the project in Paris, in Messina, uh, there's a reduced uh, supply of, um, of, um, of street parking compared to what the, the regulation uh, required at, at the time, uh, but not a full elimination of non-essential uh, parking. That's why Masséna scores lower than uh, Central Saint Jai uh, by our um, uh, TOD standard. Then uh, let's fly over to uh, Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada, and um, there's a number, of course, of a very interesting um, development in Vancouver. Uh, one of them is the Woodwards. Uh, the Woodwards is um, like Central Saint Jai. It's um, it's a block. Uh, size uh, development, and this is distinction from Masena, which is um, a really neighborhood side, um, a fairly large development with a, um, a much larger population. So here we're back to um, uh, to a block size um, uh, development in a formerly um, 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 depressed part of the urban core, and. Um, um, uh, this this law that uh, had um, a famous department store uh, that was destination uh, original destination at what point but 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 closed um, uh, a few decades ago uh, was um, uh, abandoned and, and squatter for a time uh, has been redeveloped and it's been redeveloped as an e extremely uh, inclusive um, uh, uh, development in both uh, uh, land uses. It reaches gold standard with 86 uh, out of 100 points. Um, uh, let's look at this um, uh, scheme here to get a sense of the the complexity of this project uh, uh, in order to to reach a high level of inclusivity. And uh, so uh, there is um, uh, there is market rate housing. Uh, that's the 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 yellow goldish um, uh, uh, towers, you know, the top of the towers. 
there is social housing of various uh, of various kinds. Actually, let me shift to this uh, next slide that uh, highlights the the affordable housing uh, as well as the affordable uh, activities um, uh, floors. And in in red, there's a number of uh, nonprofit offices that are um, uh, let at no or very low low cost, as well as a number of uh, government offices. Uh, there's a university. Um, there's market rate housing, and there's a very highly subsidized uh, housing, including um, housing for former homeless people uh, who roam the street of uh, Gastown until uh, until recently. And uh, now there's uh, a, and the squatters of um, um, uh, the Woodwards um, uh, have been, uh, you know, one. Um, uh, when they wanted relocated in this um, in this housing, so let let me carry on. Um, the Woodward's loses a lot of points uh, because of uh, the abundant parking that it provides. There are two underground floors of parking on the lot itself, and then you see there's um, this uh, pedestrian bridge over the uh, that street. Uh, the building across is, uh, is is a large parking garage. Um, so the next point I would like to make is the TOD standard is not uh, exclusively reserved for uh, shiny, glassy new development in uh, in uh, high value parts of uh, 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 world cities. Uh, the the TOD standard is perfectly applicable to uh, all kinds of uh, development, including uh, the uh, improvement in situ of um, slums. Slums can be TOD as long as they're near transit, that they're walkable, uh, that they're mixed in both um, in, in in both uh, land uses and um, and uh, demographics. And uh, this is the case of this um, excellent project in uh, Yawada in Pune, Maharashtra, India. Uh, that's the, the the very large slum in Yawada uh, from the satellite view. Um, there was a very impressive process of um, community participation, inclusion of uh, uh, the uh, local residents that were all relocated in situ, actually on their previous footprint, sometimes slightly modified to um, uh, improve um, uh, utilities, sanitation, access uh, in places, but um, uh, very minor uh, uh, changes in, um, in, in location. And um, uh, this is uh, here under construction. This is a rendering of the, of the concept um, of, the, of the project. Uh, you see a densification, higher structures, a uh, well-built structure, um, earthquake resistant um, and um, um, the required services and uh, and utilities for healthy um, uh, lifestyle in these uh, in these places. Another uh, case that uh, we want to bring to your attention is fairly well known. That's uh, in Medellin, Colombia, and uh, among other um, uh, extraordinary achievements in Medellin, with this. Um, uh, public escalator um, uh, series in a, in a very steep uh, hillside uh, neighborhood. And so improvement of um, access, uh, there's a metro station that is in walking distance from the bottom of the, um, elevator, of the escalators. Uh, um, improving access, improving um, urban uh, landscape improving, of course, the the, the housing. With uh, uh, you can see maybe on the left side, there's a uh, there's a walkway uh, that um, uh, serves um, uh, directly uh, some houses in addition to the um, to the escalators themselves, um, and the improvement of um, of um, uh, of facades repainted. Um, this is a remar remarkable uh, achievement. Um, another view, and um, so 
um, I would have to move on from the development projects. You know, development projects are very important and uh, they, we have targeted this with the TOD standard. Uh, uh, cities are built project by project, development by development, by uh, uh, developers and uh, uh, sometimes architects, sometimes no architect, builders. Um, uh, and each piece of development, you know, it's like a, a create an accretion, the city an accretion of all these uh, these development. Uh, it's very important that they be designed and they they be um, uh, planned and um, in a, in a framework that is um, congruent with the principles that we have um, exposed um, earlier. However, of course. Um, there's much more to the sustainable city of the future, and that is a whole set of implementation processes, of policies, of stakeholder uh, alignment behind the, the principle, the objectives, and the and, and the, the the methodologies, and and so that's um, uh, something that uh, we will be addressing um, uh, further on, and uh, stay tuned for. A uh, number of uh, briefing notes on various aspects of this um, uh, implementation uh, and um, uh, planning, and as well as um, legislation and, and regulation processes that, uh, besides the developers and the architect that, that put together the, the building blocks, the, the, the urban project, um, uh, the, the frameworks and the processes are essential. So one of them is the regulation of, uh, of parking. So many of our um, uh, best scoring projects lose points for for parking because we we were the the we, actually we we were the absence of parking or very low levels of uh, of street parking supply. Um, sometimes it's just illegal in some places, and some of our score projects actually penalize because the the local um, uh, laws and regulation don't allow for less parking. Uh, I would like to highlight the uh, incredible uh, step taken by uh, Mexico City uh, very recently in July uh, 17. And um, after a long campaigning by ITDP and other local NGOs um, uh, very um, consistently over years and years, um, aligning um, the various stakeholders, the developers, the communities and, um, and civil society organization and the governments, um, the fairly enlightened governments in um, the government in um, uh, at least in some parts. And um, uh, so in July 17, the abolition of, um, of uh, parking minima, required parking um, uh, was signed by uh, the Mexico City mayor. Um, I would like to also celebrate the, um, the visionary um, policies of Cape Town, South Africa, and um, uh, their efforts in deploying, starting off from very low base, extremely low density, except for the, the absolutely uh, uh, stupendous uh, uh, city core uh, that, that um, uh, Cape Town have, and it is absolutely wonderful. But the, the endless suburbs and this extremely, of course, segregated uh, suburbs as a result of uh, uh, land use policies in the 1960s that um, uh, were apartheid, social um, segregation, racial segregation was embedded in land use policy and in transport policy. So uh, very vigorous efforts in, um, in Cape Town to change this legacy and, and uh, uh, TOD is of a strong, uh, I would say central and absolutely explicit element of, um, of that uh, transformation of Cape Town uh, that is envisioned. And um, starting from workshops in uh, 2014 to um, uh, very, um, uh, sophisticated approach to reforming the, the, the institutions, their roles, uh, their, their, their mission, and so on and so forth. In, in particular, the, the merging of the transport and the land use, um, um, uh, the, the land use departments. So this uh, led to um, 
uh, TOD policy that is very central and uh, that, that is visionary and that is very important. So um, all best wishes to keep down in implementing that. Um, I would like to also highlight uh, the amazing move of the state of Jharkhand, one of the, the poorest states in, in India, uh, with I think uh, about 40% of people under the, 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 the poverty line. Um, um, and uh, the state of Jharkhand uh, worked with ITDP to em embed the TOD standard principles and objective in its um, uh, uh, development policy. Keep in mind that in India, um, the state has um, most of the authority over uh, development regulation, laws, um, and very uh, much less is uh, under the authority of the, of the cities. So, Jarkin expects 30 million additional urban population uh, by 2030, and that's a doubling of the capacity of cities that is needed uh, in that time period. So imagine uh, the, uh, the urgency and the, 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 the importance of um, uh, applying TOD principles, TOD objectives, methodologies for TOD to places like Jarkin. So this is the end of my presentation. Please stay tuned for more T T TOD webinars soon. Uh, we have a number of resources av available on our website. Uh, we have a specific uh, TOD uh, publication in Mexico, in Brazil, in India, um, and we have more to come. Um, and I would like to highlight the, the work of a number of partner organizations where there's um, uh, a great uh, wealth of uh, resources uh, when it comes to um, figuring out the process of implementation, the, the, the process of actually making hap happen uh, a city that is by the TOD standard. Um, so uh, please um, uh, check out this, uh, this page. I'm not going to, to read everything. There's uh, the C40, WRI, uh, World Bank, CTOD, Reconnecting America, um, and there's more. Contact us if you, if you need more uh, references. So thank you very much. This uh, concludes the presentation. I look forward to your questions and, uh, and a vigorous discussion. Great, so I am looking through the questions that you have submitted here. The first one is from Michael. Um, did you say that the creation of low-income housing encourages additional poverty? Um, no, I didn't say that. Uh, am I online here? Okay, sorry about that. Hi, uh, hi Michael. Thank you for your question. Can you leave the question on? Oh. oh. Um, I didn't say exactly that. Um, I said that um, uh, adding social housing to places that are where poverty is already prevalent is not always the best uh, solution for the people who will be uh, living there. Uh, because of the, the dynamics of um, uh, local deprivation. And, um, um, so we, ITDP, and the TOD standard is, um, is written in a way to, to promote um, social and other uh, demographic uh, 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 integration at the neighborhood level, even at the block level, because we think that's the, that's the idea. Uh, even in, you know, station area, for example, example, if you consider a station area, a neighborhood, uh, you could very well have all poor people and disadvantaged people on one side of the track and all rich um, and, uh, you know, uh, well-off people on the, the other side of the track. So a uh, neighborhood scale is not even uh, sufficient. We, we promote uh, integration at the block level and the project uh, uh, level. I hope, I hope this, uh, this answers uh, your question. The next question is by Ellen. Do you include TNCs as a part of transit? That's a great question that I will not answer today. Uh, we, uh, or I will answer it very uh, superficially. We think that uh, all, uh, uh, all forms of uh, uh, shared uh, transport that uh, that makes sense in terms of uh, one not undermining the public 
uh, the public transport uh, structure. Second, are really shared and not uh, just uh, you know chauffeured uh, chauffeured rides uh, are shared by enough people to uh, reduce the uh, environmental footprint of um, of a trip uh, to a level comparable to to transit. So that these would be my two first uh, uh, that criteria. But it's a long discussion, so uh, I leave it at that. Um, for when the TOD standard uh, is concerned. Um, we and um, the TOD standard is very flexible as a planning tool, so, so people can uh, use criteria, you know, tailor criteria to 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 their needs. Uh, but when it comes to uh, scoring um, uh, development projects, um, we uh, only accept uh, projects that are within walking distance and fairly generous walking distance of up to one kilometer. Um, within walking distance of um, uh, high capacity transit or of um, regular local transit that connects to high capacity transit and is frequent enough uh, under 15 minutes of uh, mm -hmm. headways. So that's what we take into account for the TOD, scan TOD standard scoring of projects. Okay, great. So we still have about 10 more questions and we'll try to get through as many as possible. Uh, David asks, is non-residential density rewarded more for being closer to transit stations than residential? So David, both types of densities are treated the same way. You want to see higher or greater density of households and activity closer to the transit station, but also as compared to a similar baseline within the same city. Um, so not only that, that density should be comparable, but also higher, closer to the transit station. I hope that makes sense. The next question is from Todd. Can you offer any potential solutions for minimizing conflict between pedestrian and cyclists and mass transit buses within limited right of way? Oh God, yeah. But well, that's uh, of course uh, that's uh, that's always the the, the the challenge, you know. When there's a bottleneck, uh, who goes first? Um, uh, are we widening a right of way so we can have um, um, a, a cycle way and, um, and and a good walkway? Um, my view on this is that. Um, the, the mode that uh, that transport the most people uh, should have priority. Uh, of course, rapid transit also is um, uh, is really essential to the, the functioning of a whole city and the connecting of a, uh, hopefully walkable neighborhoods uh, together and with opportunities and resources. Um, always a challenge. It has to be sort of case by case um, as far as that. As I, uh, as I know, I think um, uh, in some cases it's possible to reroute um, uh, cyclists to parallel uh, side street if, if they're really uh, close by. Um, so um, it, it's, it's, that's a whole um, a session to have on this, um, on this question. Thank you for the question. The next question is from Michael. Uh, what does cross subsidize mean in terms of low income housing and how is it that it doesn't cost the government anything? So in that case, um, uh, and we are talking about the Central St. Giles project in, um, in, in central London. Uh, well, there was some cost to the government in terms of uh, the, the, the uh, um, uh, supervising the, the, uh, the, the, the planning process. Um, um, uh, organizing um, uh, participation between uh, local communities, the developers, uh, writing the goals, very uh, enlightened, very progressive uh, goals, including uh, suppression, complete suppression of non-essential parking, uh, if, um, if possible. The project was uh, initially designed on the basis of uh, having um, uh, much more parking, uh, the, it's actually the local government who uh, uh, encouraged the developers to, to, to get rid of, uh, of parking. The developer now is uh, 
is um, looking for uh, more place to for for bicycle parking because bicycle is so popular uh, they don't know where to store uh, the bicycles of uh, people who come work in that uh, uh, in that building. Um, so cross subsidize in this case is uh, that uh, uh, we have a very um, um, high end uh, development, uh, very expensive real estate. The um, the borough of Camden um, allowed the uh, the office um, section of the of the development to to add uh, I think two floors, at least one floor, maybe two. Um, in exchange for um, a, a number of um, public amenities, uh, uh, including uh, housing and uh, affordable housing, including public spaces that are uh, open, you know, through the block, that are open 24/7, are maintained by the uh, by the landowner, the, the building owner, and um, so in this case, the the, the cost of um, of um, uh, producing those uh, affordable housing units was uh, for the government was uh, zero, I believe. Um, and uh, but uh, of course, there's a there's a cost to the to the resident, to the lower income resident uh, uh, who pay rent, uh, who pay who pay some utilities that, that sometimes are a little higher than in other places. Um, uh, but um, um, all right, I, I hope this, uh, this answered the question. So we'll try to fit in two more questions if possible. The next one is, how can TOD translate to revenue for local governments and are there any metrics used? How can it encourage public or private investment in TOD? That's a great question. So, um, um, And it's a complicated one. Um, I'm, I think TOD um, is, uh, the, the purpose of, of TOD, at least the, the way we conceive it, is not to generate revenue. Uh, I think uh, we're, we're happy if it uh, doesn't um, um, anchor um, uh, higher costs than uh, non-TOD, uh, that is car-oriented, um, uh, you know where all the transportation costs and the environmental cost of the life cycle of the of the development is is externalized. Uh, um, uh, with the land is cheap on a on a periphery and so on and, and so forth. Um, a few services uh, and so on and so forth. So um, being able to finance TOD in contrast to this kind of um, of uh, low quality. Uh, uh, low sustainability, low equity, uh, peripheral sprawl type uh, development is a challenge and uh, being able to uh, just uh, break even um, while having all the excellent uh, quality uh, infrastructure, public spaces that encourage people to actually walk as opposed to um, uh, using their cars or their, or their uh, motorcycle only if they access to uh, uh, to motor vehicles, um, uh, that's a huge achievement. And uh, in many cases, uh, at least at the beginning, uh, TOD project will need to be actually uh, subsidized either through uh, fiscal in incentives, through uh, uh, lot preparation if the lot is, um, for example, polluted and need uh, remediation, uh, through the, the the provision of, um, of of better services and infrastructure of transport and and health uh, education and, and so on and so forth. Uh, so don't ex I, I I think it would be. Um, we I don't think we can expect that a TOD in most cases ex expect very high end um, uh, TOD will bring revenues to uh, uh, to governments. Next question. Okay, so this is going to be the last question, but please continue to submit them because I will collect them and send it to our presenters so that we can um, email you back. So our last question for our webinar today is from David. 
is this standard applicable to existing neighborhoods? So a TOD score could be assigned that identifies areas of needed improvement. Oh, hi, David, again. <laughs> so the TOD standard is uh, designed for exactly that, to score um, existing uh, projects or districts, although we do accept uh, projects that are uh, in planning where the plans are finalized, so we, we can um, actually um, use um, plans for evaluation. But a number of our offices actually use the TOD standard as a framework to estimate um, station catchment areas. For example, in Brazil, uh, this was actually the main tool to move TOD forward. Um, same way in um, our Mexico office has used the TOD standard. So yes, this is to evaluate the potential of the areas, whether it's um, neighborhood district level or a full station catchment area. And the standard is designed to um, score both uh, scales. Yep. Okay, great. Like I said, um, we will continue to answer these questions. I see on the bottom, we talk a lot about the future. I see some questions about automation and the online market. So we're excited to answer those for you. But all in all, we also want to thank our presenters, Luke and Ivona, for having this presentation for us today. And um, we also want to let you know we will have more webinars to come in the new year related to TOD and also ITDP's new BRT planning guide. So yeah, that will conclude our session for today. If you have any questions, I 